also read a tweet from Congressman Bill Keating. Uh, we have him live on the phone right now. Congressman Keating, thank you so much for joining us. We are glad you are safe. In one of your tweets, you called today embarrassing and shameful. Tell us what you saw inside that building today and your reaction to it. What's interesting, David and Lisa, is that uh, when I tweeted the first one that was read, that was before any of this uh, protest and violence uh, went forward. This was a, an instance where I was referring to the insurrection that was going on inside the building by senators and by members of the House that wanted to uh, stop the peaceful transference of power. So we had that going on, and then as the day transpired, we had what was demonstrations that turned into riots outside of the Capitol in a manner that the, the Capitol Police and the just D.C. Police that I talked with yesterday in conversation uh, did not anticipate the scope of. So that uh, we had insurrection occurring inside by the enablers uh, of the president. We had a president that did nothing short of issue a call to arms uh, and to take the streets and then we had the protesters that are there, some of them still in the, uh, in the House building, Senate buildings, Capitol area. And now as nightfall hits on D.C., the, the National Guard is uh, on the scene and going through. And I hope that the, the, these more stubborn uh, rioters uh, understand the situation and, and leave peacefully. I'm concerned, though, uh, as nightfall hits here. And as those people that are, have been the most aggressive uh, still remain. Congressman, getting back to, to that first tweet, what was happening inside the building, I don't know if you've had an opportunity to talk to any of your Republican colleagues who were planning on objecting to the certification of the electoral vote count, um, but is it your sense that based on what's happened today that some of them may be prepared to, to change their minds and to back down from that position? Uh, I think it's doubtful they will. The, the question this evening is this. As we try to secure the building and the, and the perimeters were breached, there could be uh, explosives, firearms, uh, chemicals through the building. Uh, we have to make sure it's secure in that respect. After that process is done, uh, we can move forward. What might occur is this was going to be a prolonged effort on their part going from Arizona for as many as five or six states going through the night and early morning, it might curtail them to, to just limit it to uh, a state or two states, but that's not the issue. The issue is they were enablers uh, of the president in an effort and the extraordinary words of the president before and what, the, what he tweeted afterwards when he told people to go home, he again called to question the legitimacy of our election, calling it a uh, stolen election, a fraud. He called these people that were causing great violence, attacking our capital. He called them special people, special people. Uh, and he did not uh, take the action necessary. Uh, we're going to investigate why there was a delay in the National Guard coming. I know there were calls for the Guard earlier and there were delays. I I'd like to know what uh, precipitated those delays uh, in this, uh, and there's a lot of questions to be answered as we go forward. There's one question we have to answer tonight, and that's the fact that is our democracy resilient and in place? And, and I hope as we sweep or find alternate locations, we continue to move uh, and have a peaceful transference of power uh, and demonstrate to the world which is seen. Uh, and the lead, nor lead story in all their news networks across the world, this beacon of democracy and peace uh, under attack uh, from the inside and out. Uh, and we have to make sure the end of that story is one that uh, our democracy is strong. Uh, it can withstand uh, these kind of uh, just really disgusting, unpatriotic attacks uh, and survive. And that's important uh, as the message uh, of this evening comes forward. 
Congressman Keating, uh, as we look at these live pictures right now of protesters now outside of the uh, Capitol, a uh, long line of police sort of blocking the perimeter and protesters sort of yelling out. Uh, Congressman, what do you think the next several days uh, look like in this country? Uh, before the inauguration of the president-elect Joe Biden. Of course, there still has to be a certification of the vote, which we've already spoken about. Uh, but let's say that that happens. Uh, what do the next several days look like before that inauguration? Well, I think the one, one concern I have is the fact that uh, perhaps across the country, this might spawn other riots, other demonstrations that uh, become violent. These are, that's a concern as we go forward across the whole country. Uh, as we move forward to uh, an inauguration, uh, it's, it's interesting to note that, again, that whole process of planning was severely curtailed in terms of uh, uh, the number of people, uh, the control over the uh, ceremonies because of the COVID-19 virus. So uh, many of those things, we're already planned in terms of not being in a situation that it's hard to, con to control. I mean, we're dealing together trying to fight the effects of a virus and an attack uh, from an infection. Uh, and now we have to face, sadly, uh, another kind of infection, uh, the infection of people who don't abide by our rule of law, who disrespect our democracy, people outside and inside government in that regard, but we're up to the task. I was just going to ask you to that point, Congressman, people here in Massachusetts who have been struggling in this pandemic, who are watching these live pictures play out, um, may wonder, in this moment in history, where do you find hope? And what would your message be? Well, my early morning response was one of hope, because I knew then and I know now of everything that happened, we will transfer power in this country peacefully. That's a given. And I saw the effects of uh, an historic election in Georgia, where an enormous turnout occurred, where the first African-American senator, the first Jewish-American senator, uh, actually was elected from the state of Georgia. Uh, I saw, and I see, and I have trust the democracy will continue. Uh, but I must say this, there should be accountability for what happened today, uh, and I think there will be. Uh, and I think that uh, the actions and inaction of Donald Trump uh, are, are going to have an even more uh, darker cloud uh, that will be part of his legacy. A lot of questions. People will be calling for answers. Congressman Keating, thank you for spending some time with us live from Washington, D.C., and we hope you're able to get back to work in that safe chamber soon.